So I've heard you wanted to know what a control flow graph is. So worry no more because I got you covered. And in today's video we are learning, let's see what we are learning. We are learning what is a control flow graph. So we, I will give you an example of a graph. What are the elements of it and how to create it from source code that we will write. First of all, a control flow graph is the graphical representation of control flow or computation during the execution of programs or applications. So probably you didn't understand much in this example, but I'll explain it further with an example. So first of all, what I want to do is just give you an example of what is a control flow graph. Or actually, I want to say what are the elements of a control flow graph. So here, as you can see, we have some code and with an if, the if is missing, but it's there. This is an if statement. And how would you represent a control flow graph is with these things. This is basically uh, in the simplest control flow graph there is on the planet. And this is how you would uh, represent a, an if statement. First of all, for one statement is represented by one node and we call this these blue dots or so circles nodes. The first node which has one in it it's just the the condition which is x smaller than y and this condition has two alternative alternative ways to go or outputs and the first one being if uh, x is smaller than y and the second one being if x is greater than or equal to y so if this is true you go to this node and if it's false you go to this third node and if you go to this node if it's actually true this code is executed as you can see and this is written here this code is written just for educational purposes you don't actually write the code when you're writing a control flow graph or else uh, you go to this part when x value is set to the value of y and you connect those two outcomes to the fourth node which just means the end of the if statement. This is another example I have, uh, which is how you would represent a while loop, but this is without code. And there are different ways to represent different things in control flow graph, such as for loop and etc. This is how you would represent a while loop. So this is the condition you first have in the while loop, remember? And then if the condition is true, you would probably execute some code. This is basically the body of the while loop or the definition. And then uh, you go again and check the task condition or expression. And then, if it's true, again, you would execute that code, the same code again, and it creates this loop. And if at one point in time the test expression or condition is false, you would not execute this code and go outside the definition of while and just execute the code if there is one after the, the while. Basically, you would just 
go away from the while statement. So this is an example of a, how a piece of code uh, is represented by a control flow graph. So first of all, we have a statement or a condition in the while loop that is represented by this one node. Then what you have is an if check an if condition which is represented by two and of course every if statement has two possible outcomes and the, the third one being if the condition is true you say you execute this code total 11 plus plus and if it's not you execute uh, this code in the fourth node which is total Odd plus plus. You connect you connect these two outcomes in this one, uh, which is uh, which happens automatically no matter of the what if the condition in F is true or false, which is X plus plus. So you connect these two. Well, once the once the if statement is finished, you connect it in this fifth node, and then the next thing that is executed inside the while loop is this line of code x plus plus, and then once again you go because it's a while loop, you go again and check to see if this condition is true, and if it is, you go to through the same steps we went through or the same code is executed and then once again you check the if uh, or the while condition and if it's true again so you get the point and if it's false you what you do is you escape the while loop and execute code you, that is after the while loop in this case you choose this 7 node so the next thing we are going to learn is how to create a control flow graph from our code. So what I'll do is just go inside my VS code and type in a variable. Let's call it my bank balance. And let's put in one million dollars. Let's see if I typed it right. Okay, so let's check. Let's now check if my bank balance is equal to one million dollars. And if it's true, we're going to console log. I made it. And else. I'm going to console log not a millionaire. And how would you represent this in, in a control flow graph? First of all, what I want to do is represent the first line of uh, code, which is just defining the my bank balance variable. Uh, represent it with one and we'll make the font a little bigger 19 something like 19 The second, see, now we have represented the first statement. And by the way, one node doesn't mean one line of code, it can be multiple lines of code. For example, if I say uh, create another var variable such as should you like this video and set it to, of course, true then this can represent 
a single node. It doesn't have to create another node, but we can. So let's represent now the if statement with another node, which is the second node. I'll connect these two and then create since we now have created the if condition, now we have to create the third and fourth node, which are the outcomes. The third one being if I made it, and the fourth one being if I'm not a millionaire yet. And now we need to kind of represent the end of this if statement which is just this parenthesis and now uh, we are represented by the fifth node sort of something like this that's more like it ladies and gentlemen that was another video very very successful video on my youtube channel and boys and girls hope you learned something new and thank you for watching and peace out